This video tutorial is going to show you how to add a variety of images, um, backgrounds to your web page uh, in Dreamweaver. Um, and it assumes that you've already created a few images to be used for your page that match the dimensions of your uh, various divs. Uh, for example, my web uh, page width is 750 pixels uh, down here. So if I'm going to add a background uh, banner, uh, for example, I would um, create it 750 pixels wide. Um, just going to hide the Dreamweaver application for a minute. I'm going to hide it and just show you that inside my root folder, I've already created a banner background that's 750 pixels wide. It's about 160 high. Um, I've got a little... Uh, headshot here that I might use as well. I'm not sure I might. It's only 120 pixels by 142. And I've just got a little inline, uh, a little uh, GIF image of a dog here that I'm going to show you how to put um, images in line or, and wrap text around it uh, for the demonstration. So I've already prepared them and put them inside the images folder. Um, and now I'm going to close that. I'm going to toggle back to Dreamweaver. And we're just going to show you how to add a few images in here. Um, before I before I do that, um, I want to create a couple of new CSS rules that are going to handle my images. And I'm not going to create fancy CSS rules, but just some basic class rules that will create padding and some um, uh, and some basic uh, style. For images that I add. And to do that, I'm going to go over to the CSS Designer panel and I'm going to click on the Selectors plus sign here. And I'm just going to create my own rule from scratch here. And I'm going to do that by starting with a period. A period denotes that this rule is a class rule. And there's a, a handout um, in your course site that defines these different selectors and what they mean. Um, but uh, last uh, class, uh, last week, we covered working with IDs and you can see this pound sign denotes an ID type of selector. The period is a class rule, meaning that this rule can be applied to any object um, throughout my site uh, that's linked to the style sheet. So I'm going to call this um, IMG left. And so this is going to be for images that I want to float left on a uh, page or in a div. And um, I simply click off to the right here and I'm going to um, add a little bit of padding. So I go into padding and I'm going to say three pixels. I just want three pixels. And if I click on this little middle icon here in padding, it changes all of the um, sides of the uh, object so that I get three pixels all around my image. Uh, and then the only other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down to where I have the option to float the um, uh, this rule and I'm going to float left. So anytime I apply this rule it's going to give the rule, the object, three pixels padding all around and make it positioned to the left of the page. So that's it. Um, and um, we'll use this in a second and I'll show you how it works. But we're going to add one more rule here. So go back up to my selectors area and I'm going to do class rule, which is period, image, right. And hit return. Um, and when I hit return, I get the same thing. And I'm going to do the same thing with this. I'm going to go to padding, make it three, make all sides three, and go down to float. Only this time I'm going to say float right. And that's it. So I've got my image left and image right class rules set up. So now I'm going to go back to my web page here. And I'm going to click next to my... Um, uh, title here and, and inside the header div 
So um, the cursor is blinking inside there. And now I'm ready to go ahead, double click on insert. I'm going to click on the pop-up menu and choose common. So I can see all of my common insert options. And the fourth one down is image. I'm going to click on image and choose image. And then it pops up with the finder window. And all I'm going to do here is I'm going to choose Dave head, this headshot that I've got, and click open. And so now I've got that in there, but you notice that the text is not wrapping around it at all. Um, it's spaced it sort of off to the left here a little bit. Um, and so in order for me to make the text wrap around this and apply the rule that I wanted, which was some padding for it, I keep the image selected and I'm going to go to the class pop-up menu in the property inspector and choose image left. And you can see now that the text has wrapped around that image um, and I can um, uh, continue to style with that um, image in there. Um, conversely, another way to, to handle that, I'm going to delete this image and do something a little different. Um, I could add a background image rather than inserting the image into the front end of the page or into the top of the div. I could actually make it the background for the div. To add a background image to our header div, we simply click anywhere inside the header div and you can choose it to select it from the tagline. Um, and then go over to the CSS Designer panel and we're going to click on, so make sure that the header div is selected and then click on the plus selector to add a new rule and there it is. Notice that this is in context so it's going to create a rule for the header inside the container. That's what that means there. Um, and we're going to just go ahead and hit return. And all we're going to do with the container header rule is we're going to go to the background icon, which is the fourth from the left. Click on that. And where it says background image URL, click on that. And click on the little folder to browse to the image. Uh, it's in this folder. And I've got a banner background PNG that I've created in Photoshop click open. You can see that the background is loaded in there um, and uh, however the div is not high enough uh, to show the whole image. So I'm um, with that div selected, the container header, I need to go down to um, where it says back to layout. I can leave width set to, at auto still because the width is not the problem. The height is where I, what I need to adjust switch it to pixels and I'm going to set it to 160 because I know the image is about 162 pixels high and just hit return and so there's my um, banner artwork uh, that I created uh, like it or not there it is um, and you notice though that my heading one text is still in there and I don't want to delete that because that is what is going to be um, uh, that is what is going to be found when somebody searches for my site. Um, you remember in our previous tutorial I said that heading one, and this is h1 tag, is the most important text on the page. It's what's returned when somebody searches for your website. So in order to maintain semantic integrity for our site, um, a term that you'll read about later in this course, um, we're not going to delete this heading one tag but because we replaced it with an image, we're going to hide it. And the way that we hide it is we simply select it um, uh, and make sure that we've got container header H1, that rule selected. And you simply um, open up that rule and you go to where it says display and currently it says inherit. And I'm going to click on that and I'm going to switch that to none. And you see, as soon as I did that display none, that rule then makes the heading one 
um, essentially invisible um, and we're only seeing the background image for the website. So uh, we've added um, a uh, banner graphic and then the last thing I want to do is just show you how to add an inline image um, and to do that I'm going to go down to my main content text area click inside there and on the right hand side I'm going to put this little image in here to show you what it looks like okay, just click where I want to position and add the image I double click on the insert panel um, I have the common insert panel list selected choose image and I click on image and I'm going to choose my little red dog GIF uh, that I've prepared. It's only a 48 by 48 pixel image. I click open. It pops it in there. Notice it's not wrapping and it's not positioned to the right, but that's okay because we created a class rule called image right. And to access the class rule, I simply select the image I want to apply it to, go to the pop up menu class, search for image right, that's the one I want, and boom. It it puts it over to the right side of the div and wraps the text around it. It's got three pixels of padding around it as well. Um, and if you want to adjust your text a little bit uh, inside this div, this main content div, um, you can simply create a rule for that as well for padding. So I can click on section main content, go over to my CSS rules area, and click on new rule um, container main content once again this is contextual um, I simply hit return and I'm going to go to padding here and I'm going to apply five pixels all around so now I've got some breathing room in this main content area for my um, for my text uh, I could do that as well to the footer. Um, so this tutorial just showed you how to add a couple of different types of graphics to your page, how to do text replacement while you maintain semantic integrity, and do inline images as well.